Look, uh, at the moment, uh, our injury list is quite long because we lost Kolasinac. In the game, we lost Koscielny. Uh, and uh, we had already, of course, uh, Montreal, Giroud, Ramsey, Ozil, and uh, who will be available tomorrow. The two who have a little chance are Ozil. Uh, might have a test this morning, but he hasn't been out at all uh, since Crystal Palace, so uh, I don't know. And uh, uh, Koscielny, but uh, yesterday the, the medicals uh, were pessimistic about Koscielny. What's the prognosis on, on Koscielny and Kolasinac as well? Kolasinac is out completely for at least uh, two weeks. Koscielny uh, is a uh, 30 available, 17 not. Of course, it's just the second game in the space of just 72 hours. How difficult is it to prepare and what do you have to do differently to you? Well, uh, basically, we dedicate our time to recovery, to work a little bit today to prepare tomorrow's game. Uh, and uh, after that's all, basically, it's 80% uh, recovery and 20% training. Often you mentioned the some of your injuries, how well equipped is the squad at the moment to cope with these injuries? We have a squad that is equipped to deal with that because we have shown that in the Europa League, in the League Cup, you know, that uh, we have a big squad. But uh, we cannot lose any more players now because uh, we are a bit short. What significance do you place on this game? You look at the league table, fifth place, and a small gap between the fifth and, and the top four heading into a game against obviously one of your. Rivals, what significance do you place in the well, the gap is not uh, big at the moment. I think uh, we know that our home form will be absolutely uh, vital. And uh, we just come home from West Brom frustrated uh, because we lost two points that were really frustrating. And on the other hand, uh, we know it puts us even more under pressure to deliver a big result tomorrow. Early in your reign, Arsenal dominated this fixture, then Chelsea had a spell when they dominated the fixture. Yeah. Is this as close as it's been in your time at this fixture? Yeah, it looks like in the last two years, yes. We played many times Chelsea. It was always tight results. Apart from uh, at home last year, I think we beat them 3-0. Uh, but uh, after that, was we played them many times and uh, it was always big battles. And uh, Chelsea comes back as well in a good form, you know. They've been consistent recently. So it's a uh, Good, big challenge for us tomorrow. Realistically, do you think Arsenal or Chelsea can still catch Manchester City? Can anyone still catch Manchester City? Look, uh, if they keep going like they did until now, uh, in the last three, four games, I feel they have shown uh, signs where they are less dominant. And uh, you would say that all the other teams, one or one of the teams behind them, would need to have a perfect run. And they need, of course, to to collapse a little bit. Uh, it's a bit too early to to say that. Reflecting on the West Brom penalty decision, have you had any communication with the no. referee Scotland no. about that? No. No, you know, uh, part of my job is uh, my job is to stand up for the results. Part of that uh, is as well to stand up for things I'm not responsible. But you could argue as well that sometimes uh, I get credit for things I'm not responsible as well. So. Uh, unfortunately, that's uh, the case. So it was very disappointing in the way we, it happened. And uh, I must say what is more frustrating for me is that uh, it happened many times we see it was at Stoke, at Watford, at Man City, at West Brom. And uh, that is a concerning coincidence for me, you know. and. Uh, uh, that's why I uh, I was not as well ec uh, com uh, happy at all with uh, the movement that the referee made to show why, why he gave a penalty because that didn't correspond at all with what happened, you know. So on that front, uh, it's a bit worrying. Did you get any explanation at all? I mean, I, I know Petr Cech tried to speak to the referee and he was yellow carded. Uh, no, he saw he saw what he wanted to see. You know, and uh, and uh, we have to deal with that. We have to put that in 
behind us and focus on our next game. Uh, we have to not to dwell on it and uh, focus uh, completely on our next game. I think we had a convincing result at uh, Crystal Palace. We would have won this game as well. So let's continue to focus on how uh, we can play and win the games. You made the point after the game about no English referees going to the World Cup. Yes. Yeah. Is there any concern amongst managers at the moment that the standard is I said that many times, you know, but uh, I just think we are professional and uh, what is fantastic because I stood behind that with all my power at the time uh, to afford them to be professional and I support that and uh, so you expect as well the quality because I'm in a position where they can, of course, uh, be the best because there are only two countries where professional referees in Europe and uh, that's England and Italy. So, of course, you, uh, you want them to have the time to improve and to raise their level. What is uh, maybe uh, not really confirmed, not only by my judgment, but as well by uh, the referee's judgment. The transfer window is, of course, now open. Uh, mm -hmm. Will there be any incomings or outgoings this month or after? Uh, when it's very difficult to say because uh, we are out there and uh, look, of course, to to uh, uh, do some things, yes, but uh, we will do, but uh, when is very difficult to say because that doesn't depend only on us. Do you have positions in mind? I know you can't speak about individual players. Do you have positions in mind you would like to strengthen, if possible? No, we are open uh, in any position to for the exceptional player who can give us a plus, you know, and uh, uh, therefore, of course, uh, depends a little bit on the injuries as well. And and uh, on the other hand, I must say as well, it depends on uh, who uh, will manage to extend the contracts of the players who are at the end of their contract in June. So it will depend on that as well, because we'll have to... to uh, uh, take the consequences of, that, of these decisions and uh, uh, respond to it. Is there any progress on those contract talks, contract extensions? Well, the progress is uh, in, this, in our job. Sometimes you think one day you make progress, the next day you move back again. So as long as something is not signed, you know, you don't like to talk too much about it. If you lose Sanchez, Ozo, Wilshire in the summer, how do you cope with that? What's the plan? Well, uh, we, uh, how we cope with that, first of all, we, nobody has, uh, we have not lost them yet. And secondly, uh, we, have, uh, we will respond to that uh, by bringing in players of, uh, of uh, top quality. Have you had any formal offers? Now the window is open. Any formal offers for Sanchez or Ozo this, win this window? No, we have not been contacted by anybody, no. And I know you've spoken about it a lot. Are you confident at this stage as of today that you can keep all three of them longer beyond the summer? We try. And, uh, but you know, if, uh, I answered that question many times. I think at the moment uh, uh, the best is not to talk too much and focus on tomorrow's game. The final question, uh, you're being linked, uh, a few reports linking with David Luiz and also on Thomas Lamar. Uh, Lamar. Um, can you revisit perhaps no, I don't want to speak about any special name, but uh, uh, these reports are wrong. On, on Louise? Yes. Thank you. Um, Arsene, after the win at Palace, Jack suggested or hinted in the TV interview that he would be signing a new contract. Is that, is that something you can clarify? You know, just answered that question, you know, uh, that we want them to stay. After uh, I, I say I answered that question, because as long as things are not signed, you can say you are positive or negative or, or super positive. When things are not signed, you shut up and uh, uh, you announce things when they are concrete. You know, that's uh, as simple as that. In terms of Sanchez, obviously people are going to always link him with a move away. And you'll, yeah. and you'll, you'll lose him in the summer for nothing if, if he goes. <laughs> Would it be beneficial for the club to Look, uh, honestly, my, my focus is uh, on tomorrow's game. After that, uh, uh, this club has lost many, many big players and has always responded well, you know. 
Um, massive players have left this club, and uh, the club will always be in a strong position on that front. So, I, I, uh, and uh, but you want to keep your best players, yes. Chelsea tomorrow is the first of three games you play against them this month in, in two different competitions, albeit. How difficult is that when you're playing the same team almost? You worry about the next one and after you deal uh, with the rest after, you know. The, in football is only one thing, is next game and uh, uh, deal with what you had just. Uh, we have just to put the disappointment behind us uh, that we got at West Brom and, and deal with the challenge tomorrow. Finally, just going back to that handball at West Brom, um, Stuart Pearce on Talk Sport said Monday that, that if all handball in the penalty area was given as a penalty, that would be that would clear everything up, regardless of if you know men's or not men. Would that be a way now? Because no one's sure. Actually, if it's I uh, don't think that would be the way because uh, uh, you have to put things into perspective. To score a goal in football, you need to make uh, sometimes 25 good passes that demand some quality and to create a goal chance. And just for me to give a, a goal away. On, uh, because somebody moves the ball to your hand, it uh, would be uh, ridiculous. I think the, four, the, the oldest rule in the game is the best. It has to be a deliberate handball, and uh, that's it, basically. Or we play, uh, I, 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 we play a fast game. It's not serious, but you have to, to create a goal chance, you need to play football. And suddenly, because somebody hits your hand, on purpose, you just need to lift the ball then to the hand of, of, the, of uh, on the arm along the body of anybody, and it's a goal. Uh, it's, it's not serious. Awesome. How many uh, other Premier League managers agree with you about the standard of refereeing? I know Pep Guardiola was concerned about. He, sp he spoke to Mike Riley last season. How many do you think agree with you and are worried about the? I don't know. I just said uh, if uh, I would say the referees first. Because we have, uh, who, who, uh, who assesses the referees who go to the World Cup? The referees. You know, so that's, that's basically the conclusion. I'm not uh, good enough uh, to judge the referees, but uh, I just give, uh, give facts. That is, is facts. You just mentioned about players, big players leaving Arsenal. You're not scared of potentially losing Sanchez, Ozil, and Jack Wilshire then? No. Why? Because I want them to stay. <laughs> Why should I be scared? Um, and with regards to Chelsea, you beat them 3-0 at the Emirates last season. You also beat them in the FA Cup. Do you scratch your head sometimes and wonder why you can't play more consistently like you did in those games across the season? You're a bit uh, harsh with us because uh, we made 75 points last year. You need some consistency to do that. And uh, we won the FA Cup against a uh, strong team. So... Uh, to go just to go to the final of the FA Cup, you need to be consistent, you know. So uh, uh, I believe that uh, the Premier League is very even and very difficult for everybody. And uh, uh, the target in 2018 is to win every single game, and the next one is Chelsea. Thank you very much.